Hey everyone, how's it going? So recently I had a conversation with someone about how easy it is to get started with Fast API. Today I'm going to show you how to really quickly knock something together in Fast API, and then I thought I'd take that even further and we're going to host that on Azure. So I've created a basic project here in PyCharm, and this is just the default stuff it gives you. So we're actually going to get rid of this and I'm going to paste this in. Now we're going to go through this bit by bit, but first we need to install the dependencies we've got up here. So what we want to do. We're going to come down here to the terminal and we want to type in pip install fast API all. And now that's installed everything, uh, it's installed fast API and then it installs um, some other packages along with it that help it to run. Uh, it starts by setting up um, an instance of fast API and then literally it just jumps straight into our endpoints and they're as simple as this. The, the default one just goes straight to this and it maps it to this function and we're just going to return some JSON. We take that a step further, so we're specifying a, a sub. URL here, and where it's got name like this, this actually maps onto the function input here. Finally, we have post. So this goes to a slash items endpoint, and here it takes in an item. And now this is what we had up here with our base model, and the base model from Pydantic actually just lets it do a load of extra input validation for the model. That is all the code we need to run our API. So if we come down here to our terminal, you remember earlier I said that when we did a pip install for fast API and we specified all, it actually gave us some extra stuff to help this run. Now, one of these things is called Uvicorn, and Uvicorn is basically a service that lets us run our server and it's what fast API sits on top of. So if we call Uvicorn main app reload, this is going to find this app in here and it's going to run our service for us. So here we go. After we click that link, it takes us straight to the browser. And look, we can see our default path already with welcome to our app. We can do slash hello slash Rowan. And here it's taken in the value we've passed in for Rowan. We can put something else in Rowan2. There we go. And now for the post example, I think it's actually going to be easy if we go to slash docs. This is going to take us to the swagger page. So if we go to our post one, we go to try it out. So the name Apple. And for price, we're going to put in 199. And we hit execute, Apple is priced at £1.99. And that's all you need. We've got fast API up and running locally. So what we want to do now is we want to take a look at what we need to do to get it running in a container. And then we're going to put that container on Azure. So if we go back to PyCharm, we're going to have to play around with the, how the project layout looks a little bit. So we want to start by adding a new file called requirements.txt. And what this is used for is it sets up the requirements for our, our Docker container to tell it, what am I going to try and install? We actually have to give it here the names of the packages we used from before. So what I also need to do is create a new directory. I'm going to call it app. You know, here at the side. Now, actually, what I want to do is drag our main into there. We also want to add a new file in here called underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot pi. We don't really need to worry about that for now, apart from just making sure that it's in there. The last thing we need to do at the top level is add a file just called Docker file. We're using Docker for our container, and this basically tells Docker how to interpret our project and, and run it in a container. So I've got these default things in here. Uh, let's run through it line by line. So we start by telling it what version of Python we want to base our image off of. We set up a working directory, so we have somewhere for all of our code to live. We copy the requirements into the new working directory function that we have next, which calls it. So now finally, we're going to copy the code into the working directory. Whilst it's not running locally, uh, it still gets interpreted the same way by um, the container. So it still uses Uvicorn and it still has some of the same things that you would use to run it um, locally. Now, if we actually come back down to the terminal, we can do docker build dash t, that's giving it a tag, my image, uh, and then a dot, and that just tells it. Uh, look for the Docker file here. So if we run this, it's going to build the image from these instructions we've just given it. And there we go, it's built the image. So what we want to do now is run a, a Docker run command to tell it to run the image we've just created. And now that that's running, we should just be able to go straight over to our browser, localhost, and because it defaults to port 80, this is our app running in our container locally. And you know, we can do slash docs, and that brings up our Swagger documentation. So great, we've got our server running and now it's running in a container. So the last step we have to do is make this container run on Azure. 
So here's our Azure dashboard, and we're going to create a resource. It's supposed to be to set up a resource group. So here we can give it a name, and let's use a fairly standard naming convention, RG dash, and let's just have RL, and that should be okay. Yeah, that's good. Let's change this to UK South, and we're just going to review and create that. And in here, what we want to do is create an Azure container registry. Now the registry is where the container lives, and we want a registry, not the instances for now. So let's pick the resource group because that's where we're creating it. The registry name has to be unique and it can be a bit of a faff around. There we go. I have to click create twice, once for validation and again to actually do the creation. So I give it a second to deploy and now we can go to the resource. So what we have to do now that our container registry is set up, we have to go to access keys and we have to enable admin user. And this is so that our local terminal can basically talk to this and, and log in. So we actually have to take some of these values from here. We have to take the login server, we have to take the username, and we have to take the password. And now if we come back to our terminal, let's just make this a bit bigger. What we're gonna do is we're gonna type in docker login. We're gonna put in the name of our server. We're gonna have dash u for username, and we're gonna have in dash p for our password that we copied. So if I hit enter, I'm going to give us a little warning, but it's still going to log us in. So what we actually need is we need a Docker build where the tag is related to where we want to push to. So we want to type in Docker build dash T for our tag. Then we want the server name. We want slash. Now we want some kind of container name. This can be whatever you want. It doesn't need to be anything special. Colon. And now we need some kind of build tags and we need the dot as well to tell it what to build. And now that's built, we can push it. What we need to do is let's actually take the name of the tag we created up here. And we're literally just going to call docker push and then paste that tag in. And sometime later, it's going to have uploaded that. So if we go back to Azure and we scroll down and click on repositories, now we can see the actual thing we just created here. Every time you build, if you build with a new tag, you'll have a whole like trace of all of the images you've uploaded. So now that we have our image stored, we can actually create an instance of it. And now we can go to container instances. So we've got our resource group of container name. Uh, let's use a similar naming convention. So for the image source, now we can click Azure Container Registry. We can pick the one we just made. And here it's got the thing, the uh, container that we just did. And it, it lets us pick the image as well. And we'll leave those default and we'll create that. Okay, so it took about a minute to deploy, but now we can click on go to resource. And here is our container running. So if we get the IP there, now we can literally just go to the IP address. And here it is, our container running. Let's zoom in a bit. Again, let's just go to docs name Bob1294. And there we go. We now have our fast API container running in Azure. All the code I've used today, I'll put in a, a link to a GitHub repo in the description and also put a link to the fast api docs because they're super easy to read and you can expand on all the information that we've learned here today thanks very much for watching